Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Pods of the Multiverse. We're an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play d and I'm Andy, and I'm the host for our adventures in the world of Theros. I don't know why I said host, but I'm the DM <laughs> for our adventures in the world of Theros. Let's go ahead and reintroduce our players for this game. I'm Jimmy. I play Gran, the Minotaur, changing hearts and minds all over at Phobros. I'm Stella. I play Andromedy, a human mage, bringing people together through the power of remote viewing. My name is Jeppy. I play Clix, the Leonin rogue. Oh, wait. No, he's, he's a kitten now. Or is he a Leonin? <laughs> I think he's a Leonin rogue. All right. Well, have it your way. Yeah. And you know what? I think the reason you said host instead of DM is because in our table talks, we've been playing games where one of us is the host of a fun mini game. Oh, my God. And And if you were a Patreon, you'd know it. So you should definitely check out our Patreon. You know, that's actually not a good... You know, that's not a bad plug for the Patreon. <laughs> not a bad, it's not a bad plug. I thought you were going to say, that's not a good idea, is what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> no, like, the table talks have been a ton of fun lately. And, hell yeah. Uh, it's a good time. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get back into this game. Let's have a recap, everybody. After leaving the camp of the Spears of Anax behind... You entered into the Ashlands in search of the buried and forgotten temple to Clothis. You made your way through the noxious Ashen Haze, encountering a band of returned marauders, which you dispatched handedly. You found a ruined watchtower where you made camp, and in the night found a wandering group of cursed souls, lost and crying out in the terror of the night as if reliving their traumatic demise. Gron and Clix swiftly put their suffering to rest, and the next day the party found the temple. Within, they found many ruined chambers, one of which had a scrying pool, which they used to see Califex, who appeared to be with a group of hoplites scouting somewhere in the wastes. Eventually, they found a massive chamber beneath the temple. Littered with bodies of the dead, Clix led the party hesitantly, crossed and toward a large ziggurat in the center. Seeing a gleaming pixis, a urn of sorts at its top a voice appeared to the party tempting them to take it and use it for their own rather than the will of the gods while the bodies tried to grapple them as they drew closer upon trying to climb this ziggurat the voice finally manifest in a large demon an eater of hope who looked ready to fight after his temptations seemed to fail and so we've got clicks up top a platform lower behind him Andromedy and Gron. Everyone, let's go ahead and roll some initiative. I got a 14. Dirty 20. A respectable 10. Okay, and this demon rolled pretty bad. Everything he does is bad. <laughs> Just a reminder for everyone, the only real light sources in the room right now are the dim light from the Pixis and the light from Gron's mall. Going first is Gron. All right, I suppose I should climb the rest of the way up then. I'm going to back up to that ledge again and just run and do a high jump and grab onto that ledge. Awesome. Go ahead and give me an athletics check. It's a nat one Uh plus eight. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. 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 I'm going to need you to make a dex save. (laughs) 17. Okay, so you go to back up and take a running start to jump up to this next platform, and instead of that, you slip on the back ledge of the platform behind you. You don't fall down, but you are now prone, pretty much in the exact same spot where you started. Duh. All right. (laughs) Uh, little shit. Would Gron still have enough movement left to stand up from prone? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm standing on this ledge. I'm going to take my hand axes from my belt and just wing them at this guy. It's an 18 to hit. That'll just hit. All right. Jesus. Don't like that. Ooh, that's 11 slashing damage. Not bad. Very cool. You strike into this foul demon. Clicks, you're literally right in front of this thing, and uh, you see this axe wing over the top of your head, and it shouts out... Your mortal blades are no match for me. 
Aren't they magical though? Oh fuck! Because they of are the wild all, magic bullshit. They are all okay. I need to remind everyone of all of the shit that happened. So, <laughs> um, everybody's weapons are plus one and magical, right? Unless they were already magical. So add one to that damage, unless you did that already. No. Okay, so that's actually 12. And he would have said that, except this humming hand axe carves into him, and he would have been resistant, but he's not, because fuck wild magic. So, okay. Uh, Great. Anything else from Gron? Yeah, a whole second uh, attack. Go for it. (laughs) Ooh, that's a 12 to hit. That'll miss. Dodges out of the way as shadows swirl around his form. That's Gron. Next up is Clix. Gonna stab him. Go for it. Uh, 19 hits, right? That'll hit. Cool. 11 damage. Cool. Anything else? Uh, and then uh, my offhand. Go for it. No, not my offhand. <laughs> Great. Um, Clix, as you're swinging into this demon, perhaps the only thing holding back your fear... At this point, being the hero's feast that you all still have, you can't help but notice this shining, brilliant artifact, this Pyxis, near you now. Go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw. Nine. With advantage? Oh, with advantage. Hero's feast. Oh, nat 20. Nice! Fuck. Okay. Wise as fuck. Amazing. You, You look at this thing... And you can feel this presence about you. Not a demonic presence, but rather that of the god of deceit. Really trying to compel you to take this thing. And on a nat 20, there may or may not be whatever you guys are looking for in it. But you can tell that this item, this Pyxis, just has the most terrifying feeling. Like, it is wildly dangerous in some way. And that is Clix's turn. We go to Andromedy. Okay. I'd like to climb up the rest of this wall. Okay. You still have Levitate up. Then, am I still like one level down from it or? No, basically the highest platform is, it's just a platform. Okay. And so you're next to Clix, essentially. All right. In that case, I'd like to push off sort of the edge, so I'm kind of just hovering in midair. Okay. And then I will point at the demon and say, Defiler of this sacred place, you have offended the god of destiny. Grovel and beg her pardon for this affront. Uh, And on Grovel, I'm going to cast Command. Oh, shit, okay. Um, And he can make me a wisdom saving throw. You got it. That's a straight roll. And that's a natty 18. Uh, I'm sorry, I think you meant six. Okay, uh, there it is. All right, well, what does that fucking look like? Uh, as he as he goes to say, <sighs> That god hoards no power. And you invoke this, whatever. Um, so the way my command looks is, again, these sort of st- strings fly out from my book as I encant, and they sort of affix to the target, sort of like marionette strings. Okay. And it looks like the demon might break free, but mm-hmm. the more it struggles, the tighter they grasp, and they just rip downward, pulling him towards the floor of this platform. Very cool. He is shunted down uh, and has to spend his next turn doing that. What have you done? I assume I have to roll percentile for... Yes, you do. Yep. Uh oh. What does a 98 do? No. No. Uh oh. Oh god, what's no. happening? No. No way. Uh oh, have I derailed the entire campaign? Oh no. Oh god. Okay, I have to assert the number of creatures in this entire region. <laughs> My fucking heart is racing. One random creature in the region can suddenly cast the wish spell once. What? Within the next minute. Well, that's a Chekhov's gun. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. (laughs) This is wonderful. Oh, God. (laughs) No, God. We've done it. We've done it. (laughs) It's Wish. Wish is here now. This is the game now. (laughs) But who gets the Wish? Okay, so this includes the demon. Uh, Clix, Gron, Andromedy, 
Eater of Hope, and one, two, three more important unknown entities, and then about a hundred mooks. So, <laughs> I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> if we say if we say that the three of you have a 1% chance out of all of the other people in play right now, I'll assign Gron is 1, Andromedy is 2, Clix is 3, the Eater of Hope is 4, um, a very, very bad NPC is 5, another NPC that's not as bad is 6, and then everything else is... Everything else. Is random. Uh, they might cast it, and who knows what that would be, but it's going to happen in the next minute. So here we go. I'm going to oh roll. Oh my god. I'm going to roll. <laughs> I'm going to roll. It's a 40. Okay. Oh, wait. Hold on. Are, is the I got a four and a double zero. That's four. That's four. That's yeah. the year of hope. That's, That's the, the demon. That's the demon. <laughs> Oh my god! Kill it next round! It needs to die next round! Oh my god! Oh my god! Because it can't do it this turn, because it's grobbling! It can't groveling. do it this turn! Holy shit! But it this needs to die! Really Holy shit! Terrifying. And I know exactly what it's gonna do. Okay, here we go. Oh no. This is insane! This is absolutely insane! What the fuck? Okay. That was Andromedy's turn. Andromedy, do you do anything else? You see, as you cast this suggestion, it begins falling down to the platform near clicks, and this undulating, these threads, almost like the ones that you are very familiar with, but Nixian, twinkling in a myriad of rainbow colors, begin swirling around this demon, and you can tell something incredibly unstable and powerful is beginning to take hold within his form. Strike it down now! It spends its turn groveling. It falls prone and it is prone. <laughs> it has a ticking time bomb inside of it and it spends its turn groveling. <laughs> when I break free of this trick, it will be your end. And it looks pissed, but it's groveling. Um... That is the top of the round. There is a lair action that takes place on the top of the round where I need somebody to roll a d4 for me. I'm not touching dice. One. Okay. All three of you can can see because of Gron's maul. One swarm of these skeletons, these corpses, begins climbing up the ziggurat towards all of you. Great. That's kind cool. of moaning and, and, and approaching very slowly. It's on the first platform now. Oh, great. Just what we needed. That is back to Gron. <laughs> oh, it's just got a lot more serious. Better act fast. I'm going to try to climb the thing again. <laughs> kind of hope he falls after saying better act fast. Just falls on his face. <laughs> <laughs> that happened last turn. I'm it was only on a nat one. Literally <laughs> just because of the nat one. <laughs> Will a 12 do it? Yeah, 12 will. That's fine. All right. So I back up to the ledge. I take a running start, jump up, and pull myself up onto the next ledge. Awesome. Now you are on the other side of clicks. So basically the three of you are kind of in a line here uh, with your back against the ledge. And the demon is in front of you, and the Pixis is directly behind him. All right. Now that I can see him laying there on the ground like an asshole, I'm going to hit him with my maul. Go for it. All this fucking shadow and now this random wild magic nicks shit swirling all around him. Go for it. I enter my rage as a bonus action before I attack. Cool. All right. Clicks takes, what, two damage? And so three does the at demon. at this level. He has three now. Great. I think and most of the damage I've taken since the Cyclops has <laughs> <That's laughs> just been drawn <laughs> from rage. <laughs> it's like yeah. the only source of damage I've taken. Okay, so the Eater of Hope takes right. three there. Yeah. As Gron swings his maul, the light reflects off of all the surfaces. Absolutely. That's an 11. Uh, that'll miss. Yeah, that will. Swings and and goes above him. I'm going to try it again. Okay, that's better. <laughs> that's a 25 to hit. Great. Okay. And that's going to be 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And uh, that's Andromedy's turn. No, it is not. Uh, it's Clex. Oh, I'm sorry. It's before Klex. me. All right. Uh, attacking with advantage. Uh, 18. 18 will hit. 23 damage. Holy shit. Okay. He's starting to look hurt, um, and uh, he's kind of just 
again, on the ground, looking very fucking mad. And uh, go ahead and make your offhand. All right. And that is a 19 on the dice. Nice. Which, which crits because of Fate Weaver's Needle. Yes. Fuck yeah. Cool. Nine damage. Cool. Now it's Andromeda's turn. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the last turn. All right. Command. I can maintain the binding a little longer. Please, end it. Awesome. This is crazy. Um, so uh, it's just looking up at you, and you can see this look of burning hatred. And you cast this. Uh, what do you say? Again, command on the word grovel. Okay. And beg Clothis' forgiveness, foul demon. It's rolling really hot, so I don't know. I don't even know if you have another one of those. Uh, uh, it rolled an at twenty. Uh, I think you mean a seven. I thought. I thought so. Okay. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Clothis, sorry. Thank Clothis. <laughs> That's right. You better fucking thank Clothis. You can just see this thing. The shadows are pouring out of it with every wound that it takes, and you can just tell that this thing is quite powerful. And if it weren't for the will of the god of destiny, this would have could have easily gone sideways already. Oh, I should roll for the wild magic one more time. You I should. Say. Let's see what like, goddamn happens I, this time. I probably wouldn't have burned through all of these if it didn't, like, suddenly get a wish spell. Literally got a wish spell. <laughs> uh, 69. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Okay, this is another one that affects a random creature in the entire region. Crackles with sparks of light for one hour. Creature magically sheds bright light in a 10-foot radius, 10-foot dim light beyond. In addition, a creature it touches takes 1d6 force damage. Okay, we're going to do the same rule. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll a d100, and we'll see what happens. Okay, that one is a 38, so... What are these skeletons? You see some some of this kind of wild Nixian energy shoot into the air in this cave and leave, going off who the fuck knows where. Okay, that is its turn. It's still prone on the ground. You have completely gotten me. <laughs> <laughs> we are back to the top. Lair action. The swarm moves and climbs up one platform, so it is basically below Andromedy, roughly, at this point, because you're hovering on yep. the top. And somebody roll me another d4. So one again. Okay. One more pops up. Why not? And also begins climbing. As these swarms of corpses become animated, you can hear this ear of hope. Rise! Rise! Hopeless vessels! Rise to seek their ruin. Okay, we're back to Gron. Do damage. That's it. Just do, do damage. Do damage. Smash. I'm feeling this anger inside of me. My eyes are glowing red. and I'm trying to suppress this voice of Mogus inside of me, but it's still bubbling to the surface. Do not suppress it. Embrace it. Literal fire in my eyes right now. That's a 26 to hit. Absolutely. Yes! 14 bludgeoning damage, and this demon takes another 5 psychic damage. It has to make a wisdom saving throw. That's spicy. That's a 14. Okay. It is frightened of me. It is also now frightened of Gron. What the fuck is this fight? <laughs> This thing could do some serious damage. Yes, you guys just wish. Have yes, fucking... not going to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, great. Um, Gron, uh, you have thoroughly bloodied this thing. It is now on death's door. Hit him again. Swing again. Finish him off. You want one more? That's a crit. Oh, no way. Yes. Uh, no. Yes. No. Oh. And you know, even better, I rolled a four and a 20. Oh. On, on, eight, oh. on 420. 20. On 420. Get up. All right. There we go. That's 27 bludgeoning damage. Fucking unbelievable. Gron, paint your goddamn picture. <laughs> <laughs> While this thing is groveling, just lying prone on the ground. Mm-hmm. Completely powerless yeah. against yeah. 
us. Yeah? I just bring down my maul to crush its fucking head. <sighs> Routine at this point. This thing had exactly 120 health, and that is exactly how much damage you just did. <laughs> Insane. Mm -hmm. You smash its demon head in, and its form bursts into a cloud of shadows. The skeleton swarms behind you also burst into a cloud of shadows and fall to the ground. A pile of dust and... Fuck! Jesus! No! Fucking god damn it! Wish entered the chat and then... Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we entered the chat. <laughs> and then we were like, and we, no. And then we shadow no. banned it. No! <laughs> Absolutely oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> so... The, the, the demon is gone. You have this Pyxis in front of the three of you now, because you're all at the top of this ziggurat. The kind of writhing bodies and animated dead have all ceased, so the floor is stopped moving. The room is still dark, save for the two light sources. We exit initiative. <laughs> Unbelievably. As we exit initiative, Clix just says, that was it. He looked a lot scarier than he actually was. Yeah, really, really weak monster. Unbelievably. I cannot believe this. It could do nothing. Andromeda is like hanging in the air, kind of limp. Their arms just very tired from spectrally holding this thing in place. Give me a goddamn concentration check. Sure. <laughs> 13. Despite my efforts, you still stay in the fucking air. <sighs> Wow. wow. A four. <laughs> Rolled a four on the D100. Well, first no, no. of all, a 98. first of all, yeah, 98, 98 which four. that was literally, the threshold for that is literally 96 to 100. Four values. Four percentile points, yep. <laughs> and not to mention, I put that up against a one in 100 chance. <laughs> That that would be bad at all in this moment. I know! Crazy! Fuck this fucking game. It's great, isn't it? The best. The only damage we took as a party was me hurting clicks by accident. Exactly. Wild! <laughs> wild! This thing had a had a an, a hopeless aura. It could have cursed you guys. <laughs> it could have absorbed uh uh health from the curse. It could have done all of this shit, but it did nothing! <laughs> But it, Fuck almost, you. it almost <laughs> cast Wish. <laughs> but it almost cast Wish. We'll be paying for that in later sessions. The good news, Andy, is I'm out of portent dice. So if anything yeah. else bad happens to us, That's catastrophically true. so, That's I can't true. avert it. You see this glowing Pixis in front of you. Everybody go ahead and give me a perception check. Speaking of catastrophically bad things, Andromeda has no idea what's happening. 16. 11. I would say clicks. You would still, you know, only a couple of rounds so like 20 seconds have passed you oh. still you still have that that wild feeling from the nat 20 of, of this thing is just somehow completely monstrously dangerous there is a foul presence here but yeah, i can honestly say i felt the presence of clothes during that fight i'll fucking say all right so what do you guys do you're standing in front of this thing you have you haven't gotten close enough to examine it these are all just on perception checks I don't think we should open it. I'm not sure we should take it with us, but let's at least get a closer look. Well, I'm going to put my hand on it. You approach uh, and touch it. Go ahead and give me a investigation check. Uh, 17. Okay. The dim glowing light pulses a bit as you touch it, and you look down at it as you're standing over the top of it, and this kind of crystalline handle... Uh, you can now plainly see the entire lid is this kind of rough crystal, and you can vaguely see through it. You can't see through the sides. The sides are like this black and white ornate marble or clay or something, but the top you can vaguely see through. On a 17, you can tell that there is something in it, and it looks roughly crown-shaped. How long do you keep your hand on it? I mean, it was a pretty quick, like, put my hand on it, maybe give it, like, a light little squeeze, and just to see if it, like, burns, basically, is what I was doing. Okay, so just for, for a moment. Should we open it? I don't think that's a good idea. Why? We just killed a demon. We also killed dragons. I think we can handle whatever happens next. I'll fucking say. You guys took no damage. 
From my last perception check, I mean, it, it, you know, it was only 20 seconds later, but it was before and after the demon was gone. So I didn't feel anything different. It has not changed. Okay. And it, it does, in hindsight, it appears that while the demon was terrifying and you guys absolutely whomped it through a combination of completely random events, and that sensation appears to be attached to this and not the demon. Mm. Do you think it is safe for me to take some time to... Uh, cast a spell on it. What are you going to do? Well, um, I can determine what magical properties it has to a certain extent. Perhaps that will give us a clearer picture. Clix looks back at the Eater of Hope and then uh, looks back to Andromedians. You have my vote of confidence. Sure, if you think it's a good idea to use magic in here. Uh, well... The field is still in place. It is one simple spell. And hopefully the consequences will not be too dire. Well, if it's if it's only one spell, what could one spell do? I, I hover down <laughs> to the platform and I place my hands on this. Um, this doesn't use a spell slot because it's a ritual. I'm going to cast Identify. Okay. You sit down. You ritually cast Identify. While you're doing that, uh, Gron and Clicks, what do you do? It takes about 10 minutes. Literally nothing. I, I don't think I want to fuck around with this room any more than we have, and I'm going to sit and wait patiently. Okay, very cool. Gron's going to sit on the ledge mm -hmm. here and look into the still glowing mall at his sort of warped reflection mm. on this okay, cool. shiny mall. Introspective Gron. Yeah, introspective Gron. Why is leg? <laughs> An introspective Gron is going to... Think about the ramifications of what just happened, where uh, mm. only by the grace of Mogus was he able to finish off this fiend. Indeed. Go ahead and give me a religion roll. Not good at these. You know what? I'll say, given the circumstance, you can roll with advantage. All right. A lot of religion rolls in this game. I get a plus zero. Should have thought of this. That's even worse. That's a nine. Okay. You look within and... Kind of as this light is reflecting and you see your visage in its kind of distorted metallic reflection, it looks like your eyes kind of flash red at times. But other than that, I don't think you glean any sort of omen or sensation. But there is definitely this this connection, this, t this something that has tethered you to Mogus that so far you've used to the aid of your friends and not to the wanton slaughter of innocents. That's a good point. All right, Gron's going to use that as his uh, guiding purpose. Cool. He's going to channel the rage of Mogus into helping his friends. Very cool. Andromedy, you finish casting your Identify spell, and immediately you fully understand why your two allies are so afraid of this object. This is what's known as the Pyxis of Pandemonium. This is a wondrous item, and this is a legendary item, as in of legend. Anyone that touches this vessel for a minute gains the benefits of a short rest. Creature is also blessed. I was just touching it for ten minutes. Identify as a touch range spell. So then you're blessed, and you get the benefits of a short rest. Uh, I'm gonna guess there's a downside, though. If the vessel is opened, you have to roll on a pandemonium table to see what happens. Oh, no. Any spells that happen to be cast from that table have a pretty high DC. And one minute after the vessel is opened, it immediately teleports to a random location on the same plane of existence where there is an object that it then contains. Okay. It is also cursed. Any creature that gains the benefits of a short rest from the vessel hear some pretty <laughs> scary, ominous whispers in your mind. Oh, 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 oh no. Okay, I didn't fully read this. Um, Andromedy, as you finish your identify spell, you learn all of that shit, but you are now also cursed. So... You begin to hear these whispers in your mind, very vaguely similar to the ones that you heard from the bodies in this chamber, and also the cursed people that you came across in the wastes. 
I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Is Hero's Feast still in play? It was such a short combat. <laughs> it was such a short combat. I did take ten minutes identifying. I'm going to say that this is the last scene that it's going to The last to. time. Okay, good. Come on, dice. Oh, no. Does a 17 do it? It is a DC 17. Holy shit! Okay. <laughs> you, can feel, oh my God. you can feel the whispers trying to get you to open it. On a fail, you would have been charmed and had to have used everything in your power to try and open the vessel as soon as possible. You are now immune to it and are immune for the next 24 hours. Okay. Okay. Just roll. That's a lot. I just threw a ton of shit at you. Yeah. Just go ahead and roll insight for me. Sure. Uh, Dirty 20. On a dirty 20, you can't be certain that this was here when the Eye of Creation returned to this space, but appears as though this Pyxis appeared here and then contained this crown, this Eye of Creation, if that's what's inside it. So I I do think that's what it is in in the jar. Yes. Yes. Did my identify spell, like, tell me anything about what some of the consequences might be if I opened this? Would they? Do you think they would? Up to you. Uh, uh, I'm leaving. That's why I That's why I posed the question. I'm going to say roll arcana. Sure. Dang, 23. Okay. Okay. There are eight possibilities. Everyone in range goes berserk for a minute. Everyone in range gets inflicted with the harm spell. From the vessel pours the tsunami spell. Everyone in range gets cast... Flesh to stone. Oh, God. A random creature in range is the target of the maze spell. A random number of shadow demons immediately appear. Everyone in range succumbs to the insect plague spell. And lastly, in range, Xenagos' irresistible dance. So after you finish your short rest, you all level up. You're now level six. And... We have some more piety. Gran gets some more piety with Mogus as well. Andromedy gains some more oracle piety. Um, what are you at right now? I'm at eight. Eight. Okay. I'm going to give you two more. You're at ten. Nice. What'd you get? Divination. The spell? Quite yep. useful. As a ritual. Nice. Wow. Cool. So, uh, yeah, you guys have this Pixis of Pandemonium sitting in front of you. What are you going to do about it? Well, we could just try opening it. Maybe we should smash it with that big mall of yours. It, really? Okay. I'll get my I don't, ready. No, 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 no. I don't think that would be wise. Well, what would be wise then? I need time to think about this. We just gave you ten minutes. Yes. That was what I needed to know what the object is. And um, I can tell everyone, you know, all of the details about what it does and what it is. So you see, opening it would be disastrous. I imagine destroying it will not be simple, and even if we manage to do so, the consequences will be also disastrous. So... Can one of your preacher people help us? Perhaps. Perhaps one of the oracles might know how to open it safely. I'm gonna pick it up. Okay. You can, because you are currently immune to the curse. And when you do, something happens. When you do, you pick up this object from the pedestal atop this ziggurat, which you have all been resting upon, and the entire structure begins to faintly glow, a kaleidoscope of undulating colors, greens and reds and whites and blues, and all of these different shades, as if itself reflecting the familiar dancing lights of Nyx. You begin to see brilliant depictions, like brightly lit carvings on this structure, and the walls that are half standing in the space around this ziggurat, of Clothis, feats of her strength against the titans, and depictions of the entire pantheon uniting behind her and Crufix, and their ultimate victory and her binding of the titans in the underworld. Everyone, go ahead and roll a religion check for me. 10, 12, 13. Okay. 
You don't really notice anything too out of place about these depictions. Um, and now the entire room is kind of dimly lit. And because of that, you get to finally see the scope of the size of this cavern and how kind of buried and ruined it truly is. However, on the opposite side of the room, you begin to see a similar staircase rising out of the stone. I bet that weighs a lot quicker. It would have been good to know about that before. Let's go. Very well. Okay. This set of narrow stairs rises up and through a dark passageway that winds and turns upward in a myriad of directions until you arrive at the top at a simple wooden door that is shut. Uh, try to open it? You go to open it, and it appears to be locked. Kind of pick the lock. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead and give me a investigation check from clicks. Dirty 20. Awesome. So this door seems pretty simple in construction. There's no, like, handle. It's almost as if it's barred from the other side, but you think there's probably a way to slip something through on the side of the door where it goes up against the wall and maybe... And kind of jimmy it up. I don't think that's the right verb, but we're going to keep it. But we're going to keep it. Grown it up. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to it up. So go ahead and make that uh, lockpick check. That's going to be using your thieves tools, so proficiency plus dex. Nat 20 for a total of 27. Hell yeah. You go to Jimmy to granny up this lock. This, yeah, we're going to granny it this up. This barred door, and you just make it look so easy. Yeah, it's cat stuff. The door opens. Oh, man. Can I use my little kitten nails instead of a lock pick? Can that be canon? I mean, I'm just kidding. It doesn't matter. It can. Great. It can. It's your character. <laughs> <laughs> I like how over over the course of six or so games, you've managed to take this Leonin just to completely house cat. Like, this is no longer <laughs> remotely lion-like in any way. <laughs> Other Leonins are like seven foot tall lion yeah. people. They're lion people. Yeah. They're not well, cat yes. people, they're <laughs> lion people. He, he is shorter than the average Leonin. That's true. Though. That's true. Not yeah. house cat short, but yeah. it, it um, makes him feel that way in spirit. So anyways, this door opens... <laughs> And it looks like you're <laughs> it looks like you're looking at the back of an enormous bookcase. We push it. Go ahead and give me a strength check. I'm gonna I think you should handle this. I say to Gron. Well, books aren't really my strong. Just suit, push but... it. Oh, all right. Uh that's athletics. It's twenty six. Oh my god. Uh <laughs> Gron, you go to like it, it's almost like you think this is going to be heavy for you for some reason. You go to push it with all of your force, and you push the entire thing over. And it thuds down onto the ground, and an enormous cloud of ash billows up <coughs> as the three of you find yourselves now in the ruined library that clicks much earlier when you had arrived at this temple, saw parts of looking through a ruined hallway. It appears that you found some sort of secret passage and see yourself in this room now. You can see daylight peering through the half-broken ceiling. Uh, everybody go ahead and give me a perception check. Dirty 20. Uh, that'll be a 17 for me. It'll be a 2 for me. Cool. Clicks, I think you're still just, you know, thinking about how great a job you did at opening that door. <laughs> I did. I really did a great job. And <laughs> but it's like, oh, man. Did you guys see me do that thing with, with my nail? Did you do that more often? Uh, that was pretty cool. Andromedy and Gran, you can plainly see another way out of this temple from this room, rather than having to go through the ruined hallway. It appears as though there was just some side entryway that you guys had not seen uh, with your initial perception checks on approaching the premises. Uh, as well in the room, you can see all sorts of ruined things, uh, as, as previously described from the first time clicks got a look. There's like this large petrified tree in the center of this space, and all sorts of books and scrolls in various damaged condition. But Gran and Andromeda, you notice on sort of one of these half-buried 
tables in front of this tree, some things that don't look ruined. There appears to be a large urn in pristine condition, as well as a statue that has not been destroyed in the same way as a lot of the other statues that you've seen around this space have been destroyed. And it looks like there's some sort of cloth or cloak draped over it. So we can't see what the statue is? So this this stuff is in the middle of this room, so it's still maybe like... 20 or 30 feet away from you. How tall is the statue? The statue looks like person-sized. It's like six or seven feet tall. Uh, if you want to approach and investigate. Check out that statue there. Clicks, why don't you check that out? All right. I guess I'll go and investigate it. Cool. Uh, go for it. <laughs> it's an investigation check. Oh, it's a nine. Okay. I really went all out in that lockpick. You, yeah, you have no idea who this statue is of. It appears to be like some probably female looking humanoid i don't know the the thing that catches your eye before you can really care about that at all is the fact that the underside of this cloak what is clearly a cloak is kind of twinkling a little bit the same way that all of the nixian shit that you guys have seen twinkles and and shimmers i'm gonna turn to andromedy this is twinkling this is probably something you need to do yes um i'm gonna go set the fixus down on like this table, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You approach, you clearly recognize the tall vase to have ink that has not been destroyed and just passively you recognize it to be like enchanted ink, magical ink used for spellcraft because if it was regular, it would have, you know, been destroyed. Yeah. And you now see this cloak, which indeed appears to shimmer with the light of Nyx. It will take me some time to uh, determine uh, what magical properties, if any, this has. Like ten minutes or so? Yes, about ten minutes or so. <laughs> While I'm doing that, if I might ask you, the both of you, to um, uh, look around the rest of the library and see if there are any books or scrolls that are still um, legible. Great. Okay. And I'll begin identifying the uh, cloak. Cool. Clicks and Gron, do you uh, do as they ask? Yeah, of course. Cool. So that's going to be investigation from both of you now. There we go. That's a nat 20 nice. plus 7, 27. Cool. So I've gotten over myself. Gron? 7. Cool. And Gron's not pretending it's better. Yeah. Gron's just looking around. It's really more of a passing glance than anything else. Um, you find some remains, perhaps, uh, of people who once lived or worked here. Uh, various bones and things. Clicks, you rummage around the heavy debris and ash. You begin to find various gemstones littering the floor of this space underneath the ash. On a fucking nat 20, uh, you come out with about 300 gold worth of precious gems. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pocket that. Andromedy cast identify and you come to know this cloak as what i'm calling a shroud of nyx which is a cloak of protection so it's plus one to ac and saves and in addition a cloak of elvenkind which is advantage on stealth and people trying to perceive you have disadvantage so basically if you're not actively stealthing people still have disadvantage if they're looking for you all right Taking a closer look at the statue, is it someone I recognize from mythology or something like that? Go ahead and give me a history check. History. Okay. 18 plus 7, 25. Okay. You recognize this figure as not necessarily being human, but they look more like a naiad, a sort of uh, aquatic-associated dryad, and... With that very good role, you would immediately kind of recognize this as someone in very early myths associated not only with Clothis, but with Crufix. This to probably be a likeness of Theophilia. And um, what was she known for? Who was known to be a legendary naiad who entered Nyx and whose encounter with Crufix is 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 kind of a legend where in her name ancient followers of these early gods would go about this ritual of 
blindfolding themselves and walking across some sort of boundary, whether it was a river or through a stone archway or various things that symbolize crossing the horizon. And in hopes that doing something like this blindfolded, these gods would impart their mysterious wisdom about the world upon them. And you look up, and indeed, she is blindfolded. Sort of cosmic truths, if you will. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. Uh, I suppose as I'm, I'm looking up at this statue, Andromedy would, would remark on this as they remove the cloak. This is a statue of Theophilia, an ancient seeker of truth who wandered into Nyx. The parables of her... The parables of her exploits are often used to remind us of of times when we must let go of our preconceptions and put our faith in the gods and in destiny and go forth unknowing of what lies beyond and i will bring the cloak over to clicks and uh, drape it over his shoulders i know this has been this journey has been somewhat disorienting for you but thank you for keeping faith. Clicks doesn't say thank you immediately. Clicks like looks down and ponders long and hard, and then thank you. Really, I was gonna keep it to myself, but here I found this, and I think it it could only help all of us. Found about a hundred gold worth of gems. Pulls out the third. <laughs> <laughs> Roll fucking deception, you it. piece of I shit. It. I knew it. All right, here we go. Rolling deception. All right, it is uh, 15. Oh, my God. You can roll insight if you want. Fooled me. Wow. I've been thoroughly fooled. I only got a seven on my insight. Sure. I got an 11. Yeah. No. All right. Well, it's a lot of gems you found. <laughs> Clicks absolutely, <laughs> completely fleeces the conversation. Well, I mean, to be fair, it is charity. It's just measured charity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, it's about 100 gold worth. I've split it up as close to three ways as I can. Hope you don't mind. I'll be taking that little bit extra. But thanks for the cloak. Uh, I think it will prove useful to a person of your talents. Clicks. <laughs> There, there was, there was a narrative reason why I haven't been really giving you too much piety, but I can't not after something like that. Go ahead and roll me religion with advantage. All right. Oh my god, another nat twenty. Fuck off. You get five piety with Phoenix immediately. What? Wow. And roll a d six for Omen. <clears throat> uh, three. All of the sudden, you feel all of the magical items and gems and anything of value you have on you kind of flicker in and out of visibility and then disappear for about a whole two seconds as if being hidden from the world. And the voice of Phoenix enters your mind, simply saying, Even I had started thinking you were losing faith. Dirty. Very nice. Uh... Cool. Um, Andromedy, just with your knowledge of calligraphy and and history and arcana and all of that stuff, you know, um, there's there's a good amount of this ink here. There's probably about two hundred gold worth of of ink in this magical well. How big is the object? It, it itself is not very large. It's okay. like a you know a large you know whatever they call those an ink an ink well an ink well. Okay, so it's it's transportable yeah it's maybe the size of you know your fist or something and the value doesn't necessarily come from the fact that there's like gallons of it the value comes from right. the fact that it's fucking magic magical so, right yeah. so 200 gp of magical ink lovely is it like open is there something i could like stopper it with yeah i mean you think you could like cover it up with some cloth or something and and it would be fine yeah i'll tie a piece of cloth over it and put it in my bag great i should say the shroud on the outside is like a very dark like forest green with blue trim and the underside of course looks like starlight and nyx very cool you found gemstones, but none of these texts look like they can be read? On that roll, no. All of the tomes and scrolls in this space appear to be ruined. <sighs> Alas, a tragic loss. There'll be other books. Indeed there will, Gron. Have any of you any idea how we're going to get this cursed Pyxis open? Mm. I mean, if you just let me open it. I have explained to you, there 
come some considerable risks if you are to do that. Well, considerable risk in everything we do. I thought we were going back to your people. All right, let's bring it back to Akros with us. I suppose. I will consider the puzzle as we travel, but I see no reason to remain here. You could say that again. Let's go. Okay, as you leave the temple, you immediately notice that the very thick haze that has made travel difficult here has lifted somewhat, and your view of the surrounding landscape is much clearer. And I think it would be assumed that Gron would think the quickest way back to Akros would not be to go back through the mountains, but to simply go through Phoboros. That's right. So how would you all like to set out traveling? Well, uh, I'm going to look up at the sun, Mm -hmm. determine our heading, Mm -hmm. figure out which direction Akros would be from here. Great. Um, So go ahead and roll me survival. Fifteen. Okay. A solid roll. You see the sun in the sky, and you find your orientation, and you begin leading the party due southwest out of the Ashlands. Everybody just go ahead and give me a general, just general survival check for pace. Twenty-one. Sixteen. Uh, not great. Only an eight over here. Okay. Andromedy may be a bit distracted by the wild-ass shit that has happened over the past hour or so. But with Gron leading the way, you find steady pace. And it's mid-afternoon. By the time Gron, in the far distance, you can see the flat, barren ashlands give way to craggy wastelands of Phoboros. (sighs) Never thought I'd say this, but it's good to be home. Makes me grateful I grew up where I grew up. As the three of you press forward, I need everybody to go ahead and give me a perception check. Nine. Fourteen. Dirty twenty. On a dirty twenty, Andromedy, you notice two things. One, that in front of you, maybe about 120, 150 feet away from you, it's really hard to see them because everything is so flat out here. There appear to be these kind of large holes or, or fissures in the ground. It's not like, you know, a hill in a cave. It's it's cut right into the ground, these formations. But quickly you are distracted by sound of slow and large flapping wings in the distance behind you. Um, do you all hear that? No. Gron, you then begin to hear the wings. You do not see the fitters. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I don't hear anything. We should... <laughs> There's something flying towards us. We should run. Run where? Clicks bolts off. Doesn't wait. All right. I run after clicks. The three of you start running. As far behind you, you see an enormous dragon. Do you head for the fissures? The caves? I would have pointed them out. There there appears to be some chasms up ahead. Perhaps we can take shelter in there. The three of you start, start running uh, towards these and descending slowly out of the clouds. You see far behind you, but a large, gargantuan figure descend. A pair of enormous dragon wings, pierced and slashed in several places. The form of this dragon, dark and a dull gray. Its massive head, which even from this distance you can see is crowned with twisted horns and massive fangs. And from crowned to nose, reflecting in the sunlight brilliant, horrid, golden mask. Clicks would recognize that from the vision. Clicks would recognize this as something quite similar to what you had previously seen in an omen. You run towards the fissures. Describe what you do. I would try and tell, like, how far down they go. I don't think Clicks would. I think Clicks is going to run and jump. You approach, and Andromeda, you see they go down into darkness. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Gron, you can as well. Clix is jumping. Clix is gone. First. Clix is into the dark. I do not see the bottom. Uh, I got a five. Thirteen. Okay. On a five, you can't see much. There's honestly too much contrast between the bright sky and the sand and everything and the ash all around you. You look down and you just see darkness. Gron, you do see these sort of very old, time-worn looking stairs that are carved into the rock around the outside of this 
this first fissure that you've run up towards. Uh, clicks, go ahead and give me a acrobatics check. 21. On a 21, you, without even looking, jump into this cavern and land about 30 feet down on this staircase. The other two of you see clicks jump down. And that's not the bottom, right? That's just a staircase. Nope. That's... It descends into darkness. All right. As I run up behind clicks, I'm going to run down these stairs. Great. Andromedy, what are you doing? Can I see where Gron has been going and follow him? Yep. Okay. Then that's what I'll do. Gron is faster, but wouldn't leave Andromedy behind. Great. So the two of you catch up to clicks. You keep going. And you get you you are running down these stairs you get about 30 feet down and then almost as if by magic it is dark so what do you do next we're just three sets of eyeballs can we hear the sounds of this gargantuan you still hear this dragon flying towards this scene you can't tell how far away it is but it is still approaching clicks give me a perception check 17 you saw more than one of these caves, these fissures kind of cut straight down into the ground. Um, and there, there might be two or three or four of them you, you couldn't really tell as you were running towards this scene. But each one themselves only really looks about maybe two or three people's width. These stairs are incredibly narrow. The cave, the fissure itself is maybe only 10 or, or 15 feet wide. And so on a 17, you think, just get lower down. Your, your instinct is exactly correct. If you just get lower down, at least this dragon can't climb down here. It's enormous. Mm-hmm. I'll cast light. I'll... But put that away. It'll see us. We need to see to escape. We should stay here until it's gone. Did you see that thing? And you cast light, and it works for about a second, and then vanishes. Okay, then I'm going to cast a daylight from the drift globe. Very cool. You pull out your drift globe in the, this heat of the moment and conjure daylight and this magical darkness around you all is temporarily dispelled. As you do that, you see the maw of this gargantuan dragon kind of peer down like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, Perfect. like looking into the fucking Jeep. Like, and you hear this rumbling, terrifying voice. <laughs> This noxious gas from its nostrils. Everybody go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, God. Mm. 18. 21. A 2 passes, right? So, not even the 18 passes, but the 21 does. Just being even this close. I mean, you're maybe 60, 80 feet away from this thing's mask as it is up above this fissure. Gron and Clix, you are terrified by this. And you are feared. Andromedy, you are not. However, Gron and Clix, you just feel in this moment you have to get away from this thing. You have to get further away from it. I made my saving throw, and that's how I feel, too. Let's go. Running. <laughs> This thing kind of snarls, lifts up its head, and is circling above this cave. The three of you descend into this twisted cavern structure, this narrow fissure that goes down and then hooks in different directions, all the while these stairs circling the outside of this formation, all the way down. Everybody go ahead and give me a perception check. 17. Respectable 11. 11 as well. Cool. 17 clicks. You hear footsteps or the clattering of metal. You can't really tell, but there's something ahead of you out in the darkness. We need to keep running. Try your weapons. There's something ahead. I draw my weapon. As do I. In the hand that's not holding the orb, I open my book. Great. There's a couple of things you can do. You can try and stealth, or you can just run in guns blazing and not really knowing what's ahead of you. Um, so that's up to you. How far are we from the dragon now? The darkness kind of gets recast behind you as you descend, right? Mm -hmm. So you're far enough away where that begins to happen. You assume you're probably like 100, 120 feet down at this point. Okay. Hang back. And I'm going to try and stealth. Cool. Um, So you're going to use your your shiny new cloak? Yeah, I'm going to invoke it. 
Andromeda and Gran, you watch as Clix raises his hood of this new shroud and this sort of subtle glimmer fades around their form. And what'd you roll? 22. Hell yeah. Clix, you go forward into darkness, and I'm going to need you to make a perception or investigation check. I'm going to do an investigation. That is a 13. Uh, on 13, you move ahead and you see that there's actually a fork in this cave. Part of it keeps going down, but another part is flat, and the stairs kind of veer off into this other tunnel that leads off in another direction. You can tell that the noise is coming from farther down the stairs, and it sounds like there's people gathering or, or stirring down in that darkness. Uh, you can hear faint murmurs of people speaking in Minotaur, which I think at this point Clicks would be able to recognize as Minotaur, but not understand, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yep. below. And from this passage to the side, it appears like it is empty. Okay, I'm going to turn back around. I'll take off the cloak when I get back to my friends. Say, There's some of you up ahead. Sounds like at least a couple, maybe more. I found a way to avoid it. Lead on, then. Some of me. Are your people friendly around here? Those are my people. Gron, go ahead and give me insight with advantage. 18. These are Felhide, for sure. Uh, these are, these are uh, uh, whether they're a warband or just a scouting party or what have you, uh, these were the ones mentioned by Anax's crew to certainly avoid, if you can. I, f I found a way to avoid them. Follow me. And I'm going to lead the way, and then we'll take that path that, that seemed empty. Great. As you do, you can hear the rumbling now far above you of this gargantuan ancient dragon as it bellows out. As you hear the... <coughs> oh my god, that voice hurts my voice so much. As you hear the thunderous, booming, flapping wings as it appears to kind of fade out into distant sound as you take this tunnel, having chosen to try and avoid both seemingly Time Drinker and these Felhide Minotaurs, with now clicks leading the way, I'm going to need everybody to make a group stealth check. 24. 10. 8. Okay. Let me go ahead and average these babies. You're welcome, team. <laughs> this is why you're leading. Still not bad. This tunnel winds and twists, and there are parts that have stairs that go down and parts that have stairs that go up, and you follow this passage for quite a while, and you can tell that it is probably getting dark above. You start to feel tired from this stealth and, and very high alert travel. You go on like this for about an hour, uh, and everybody go ahead and give me uh, perception checks. Uh, at this point, the daylight would stop. Okay. I would try to cast light when that went out. Um, also, the perception is a nat 20 for a 23. 16. Also a 23. Not a nat 20. Holy shit. Uh, Jesus. Okay. Um, you go to cast light and it works. And on double nat 20s, you can assume that that magical darkness was because of the minotaurs. And you have seemingly gone f far enough away to no longer be within their territory. Those guys are bad news. And <laughs> in this... <laughs> Bad news, them guys. No oh my God. Yeah, like Ron uh, uses modern colloquialisms. Yeah. Oh my God! You guys ready to um, rock and roll? <laughs> Swings his keys in there. on the keychain around his finger. <laughs> throws going around. in guns blazing. <laughs> um, amazing. Um, this is one of these situations where you can tell if you keep traveling, you'll start to be fighting against exhaustion. You can tell that this tunnel probably goes on quite a ways further, so it's it's up to you how you want to proceed. Sleepy time. Right here? I mean, the dragon's nowhere near. Whatever that weird aura that your people had is gone. Probably as safe as we're going to get. Stop calling them my people. You know, ugh, 
Okay. I don't know if we should stay here. Uh, I don't suppose we could get out tonight. I have a bad feeling about this place. You'd know better than me. I trust your instincts as well, Gron. If you say we should continue. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so mechanically, if we got a level of exhaustion, that would go away on a long rest, right? Correct. Okay. Let's fucking do it. So the worst thing that'll happen is that we'll have an encounter tonight with exhaustion. We can, we fucking stomped an eater of hope. We can, <laughs> we'll kick the shit out of some desert <laughs> with some garbage. I, I literally had Absolute to rewrite bullshit. destiny to do Absolute it. Absolute <laughs> bullshit. The only way you lived was because of Clothes. <laughs> yeah, that was also earlier today. Yeah, it was. How many spell slots you got? Scala? I have all of them because I basically took two short rests. Yeah, Andromeda used used fucking command twice and then took and short rests once. and immediately got got all the spell slots back. Uh yeah, so I took two short rests which recovered four spell slots cuz wizard. All right, and most of what you do is ritual. Yeah, they're very good about just using rituals whenever they can. Yeah. Right. Even though you guys are now at a high enough level where a full caster has plenty of spell slots, it's for true. some reason, Scal is still like, nah, I'm not going to use any of them. So, All right, well, I got 74 hit points. I think that uh, we should just keep going. The three of you press on through the tunnel. Everybody go ahead and roll me a constitution saving throw. Wow, okay. 22. 16. I'm going to take my level of exhaustion. I got a four. Andromedy. You begin to feel a familiar sensation trying to keep up with your party and keep pace. And indeed, you should come to one level of exhaustion. However, making probably by far the better decision as in the distance behind you, you occasionally continue on those previous rolls to hear movement and, and echoes through this tunnel of banging metal and stomping and rocks falling and all manner of noise it was probably a better idea to keep moving you can't tell whether or not they're following you but there definitely is other activity down here and so pressing on continue everybody go ahead and give me one more stealth check still led by clicks 21 17 6 grand's hooves clack on the floor of this cavern <laughs> um they certainly do but certainly the do. average was better by one point than the previous roll and so you continue on and you come to another fork and again there is a passage that leads down as well as a passage that leads up what would you like to do i mean up seems obvious right yeah we don't want to be any further down than we have to be let's go very well all right Kind of trap we're walking into. I don't know. Andy seems to be figuring out what it is right now from the look on his face. <laughs> Great. Clicks. You go to ascend kind of a similar, very narrow stone set of stairs carved into the cave wall of this passage. And I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Look out. 14. Great. That just passes. <laughs> Whew. As you trip a small tripwire and a large set of bound, tumbling rocks fall down the side of this chamber, down into the abyss below the three of you. That was close. Andromeda, you look down as these rocks and boulders fade into smoke and darkness. Go ahead and roll a religion check for me. Sure. Uh, it's only a 13. Okay. On a 13, you simply can't help but feel a kind of similar sensation as the kind of, like, black smoke that rises from parts of the canyon, like around the Faragax Bridge and, and other places known to loosely, kind of ominously be associated with the boundaries between Theros and the Underworld. Hmm. There is no feeling of death farther down. Let us continue up and hope that no one comes to find what made all that racket. Very cool. Go ahead, everybody, and roll me one last stealth check as you ascend. 22. 5. 8. Oh, boy. You two need to get your shit together here. <laughs> you ascend, and from the smoke and shadows below... Gron, you hear something cry out in Minotaur. 
There's something above. Looks like we found dinner. And you hear banging, clashing, like... I just keep using all these Lord of the Rings metaphors, but this is like uh, this is like when Pippin drops the book down the well, and all of the goblins start lighting up in the caves and stuff in in, in Moria. And um, you guys know you you should probably get out of here pretty quick. I look to Andromeda and say, "Did you hear that?" Let's go. Let's go. I heard it too. Yeah, but you didn't understand it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a piece of shit! <laughs> it sounded scary. That's all I know. Let's get out of here. Awesome. Great. Uh, so something has definitely noticed the three of you and is, and, and is stirring below you. So at this point, whether or not you reach the top of this cave, I'm going to have us go ahead and roll initiative. 23. 7. 5. The three of you, I assume, are still traveling together, but unless you specify something else, I'm going to assume that you're going to move and then dash. Clicks if you want to go ahead, or Gron if you want to go ahead, you have more movement than that per turn, so it's up to you. Right now, the three of you are together at the intersection. Clicks went out and triggered the trap, then the commotion, and so now we start with Clicks. going to run away from the commotion. Cool. Are you using all of your movement? Uh, no, I'm still like leading the party, I think. So I'm going to use whatever, 60 instead of 75. I will see Click sort of stop 60 feet, remembering how he sprinted to safety when we were on the bridge together. And I will I will just say, keep going. I will catch you. That sounds... Sprint. <laughs> Clicks is his name, not Sprint. He uses all of his <laughs> movement. This episode sponsored by Sprint. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and boost ahead. Sponsored by Boost Mobile. Great. <laughs> God. Great. That is the Minotaurs below you. So they are Minotaurs. Cast darkness and clicks. You can still see because you're far enough away. You're in darkness, but you can see. Whereas Andromeda and Gron at the intersection, the light cantrip goes out. Okay. And you hear approaching below you. They are, have not arrived in your immediate vicinity and that is Gron. You hear clanging of metal up st- stone stairs and racket. You seem like you have a plan, Andromedy. Yes. Okay. Gron's gonna move and dash 80 feet. That's Andromedy's turn. Uh, I'm going to cast haste. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> and then I'm going to move and dash. Very cool. For a total of? But I think it'd be 120. Jesus Christ. So as as Andromeda whizzes past, clicks. Just, how? What? What is uh? So this is a, this is a new spell for Andromeda. What does this look like? Oh, uh, um, I think it's just like a a sort of crackle of of red tinged electricity sort of uh, appears all around Andromeda. Their movements sort of flashing with this light. Nice. Very cool. Uh, yeah, you race by Gron and clicks. And we go back to the top. That is Clicks. Doing some zoomies. Another full... <laughs> Jesus Christ. A full 105? Don't Jesus Christ me. I'm doing zoomies, goddammit. Great. Sponsored by Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by Zoom. With another 105, uh, you get up to the top, and you have an extra 10. Uh, it seemed that this way up was... More or less 200 feet. So you're, you've reached the surface, and it is pitch black outside. It is the middle of the night. Do you do anything else? I'm not going to use that other 10. I'm just going to wait at the top. You're just going to wait. Great. So then that's them. Gron, in the distance below you, you can hear these figures. Don't let them get away. I've been waiting a long time for some fresh meat. And out of the darkness going to roll with disadvantage on you, roughly 30 feet away, you see three javelins. First one misses on a six. Second one misses on a two. Hey, there we go. A 14 and a 13 does a 17 hit Gron. Yes. Gron, you take eight piercing damage as a Javelin comes out of the shadows and pierces your side. Oh. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. 21. Okay. Uh, that passes. You are not poisoned, but you do take two poison damage. Ooh. Kind of woozy. 
as as these fell poisoned tipped weapons strike into you. That is that's Gron. Gron's gonna move and dash eighty feet. You can more or less see the surface now. You see clicks about twenty feet in front of you. I wait, and that is Andromedy. I'm going to move and dash and dash again. I think I would just try to keep moving and get away from this band of pursuers. Right. So clicks, you see Andromedy rush up in their hasted state and go an additional... Uh, It would be 100. Damn. Haste. Andromedy books it away from this cave. Just go ahead and roll perception for me, uh, Andromedy. Sure. 14. Cool. You are no longer in the Ashlands anymore. You are somewhere in the middle of the Phobros wastelands. Okay. And you see a small rocky outcropping, maybe about 20 or 30 feet high. That is back to the top. That's clicks. You still hear all of this racket as if they are still chasing you. Is there somewhere to run and hide? Give me perception check. Uh, 15. In the distance, more or less in the same direction that Andromedy is headed, these kind of large boulders and rocks kind of dropped into the middle of this desert. And so, Plix, you can you can go that way as well. Um, I was going to say you could hide, but you can't. You can do that on your next turn. That's back to them. They move and dash, and now, without attacking, you see they are pursuing you, Gron, and your party. These three fell hide minotaurs, these kind of craven, cave-dwelling minotaurs with twisted, gnarled horns and sort of shaggy fur. They smell really bad, and they have these kind of matted manes and tattered clothes with sort of chains and leather bindings on their arms and about their forms. And they're carrying these heavy great axes as they approach you, but they use their whole turn to do that, and so that is Grom. Run and dash. I'm not fighting these guys now. Great. Andromedy, you see Gron pop out of the fissure and is about 20 feet away from this rock formation that you and Clix have found. That is your turn. I guess I'll try and hide. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll stealth. That's only a nine. Great. You want to do anything else? I don't suppose I could use my action to try and hide better. I'd allow it. Okay. I like... Run to a hiding place. Realize, no, no, that's not a good hiding place. I dash to another hiding place. And... Just finding the right rock to hide behind. And 11. Okay. You tried. We'll see if it works. Yep. That's, um, back to the top. That's clicks. Hiding. Okay. That's a 29. Hell yeah. Uh, Andromedy, you're like dashing back and forth between these large boulders and this kind of jagged outcropping in the middle of this vast wasteland and just keep running back and forth basically behind each one and kind of crouching down and you're not really covered by anything you're you know behind it so you're facing away anyways you just see clicks leap up onto the top of one and get real low and completely disappear amazing that is the felhides get up out of the cave and keep pursuing Again, Gron, they are about 10 feet behind you, but they are out in the open now. There's one there. I can smell another one. Where'd the third one go? You can hear them saying all in Minotaur. And that is Gron. With my 14 passive perception, I assume I can see Andromedy scrambling around these rocks. More or less. And Clix has disappeared. We can see you. Keep running. Unless we want to turn and fight. How far is it to these rocks? You're like 20 feet away from them. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna run and dash past them. Great. So I'm just gonna run full 80 feet, 60 feet past this rock. Okay. And you just keep running. Yeah. Okay. Great. Clicks in Andromedy. You see Ground Book it away from the two of you. That's Andromedy's turn. I'm just gonna bolt. Okay. 180 feet. Gone. Keep running. Great. Uh, that's back to the top. Clicks, you see your allies whom you have slowly been building some semblance of a rapport and trust with. Keep booking it. It's your turn. (sighs) Clix is going to stay hidden. Okay. Going to go ahead and roll a couple of perception checks here. Okay, have fun with the 29. Yeah. Where's Clix? So, 15, 6, and 3. Clix, you are 
invisible to these minotaurs. Damn right. As they charge forward past the rock formation, seeing that they aren't really closing the distance with Gron, and this other figure is well beyond their reach at this point. It's not worth it. Let's let the wastes have them. Gron, you hear one of them cry out as they begin to turn around and return to their cave. That's one round, so we still have Gron and Andromeda. What do you do as you hear this? I'm going to turn around and, and see if that's actually happening, if they've actually mm-hmm. turned and gone back. Yeah. Uh, roll insight for me. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah, they look like they've given up. All right. I stop running. Can I see my friends from where I'm hidden? Uh, and, yeah. And can I, I see so. that the, the fell hide of turn tail go ahead and roll a separate insight check 14 okay uh yeah it looks like they've they've given up chase okay. i'll come out of hiding start heading towards the party great Ooh. okay no no bullshit <laughs> they fucking walked away that's canon that's locked in <laughs> it is canon even on a on a 19 plus mod they don't even see you still damn right as you you flee away and um for the time being, it seems the three of you have escaped these Felhide Minotaurs. It's shit like that all the time out here. It just never, never ends. And you said you were happy to be home? That was better than the Ashlands. When I see that you're no longer running, I jog back to where y'all are. So it is the middle of the night. If you want to keep traveling, you have to make another exhaustion check. You can hold that thing a lot longer. Click says, pointing to the Pixis that Andromeda's holding. Um... I believe my resistance to the curse will last a day, though I imagine it only applies if I am in direct contact with it. So if it were to be in a bag or something of the like, uh, I think it would be safe to transport. You would understand that to be the case, yeah. Take out the Shroud of Nyx and say, would this work? Certainly, but we needn't use such a a valuable item for such purposes. I've, I've got like a blanket I can wrap it in. You're really not taking my blanket tonight, then. I had no intention of doing so. I'm very tired. Sorry. Did a lot of zoomies. (laughs) Great. (laughs) So deciding, after this near encounter, to take advantage of this seemingly only sort of landmark, as far as the eye can see, decide to make camp, and let's go ahead and have some watch checks. Who would like to take first watch? I, I should probably take first watch. This is kind of my territory. Sensible. At the word territory, Clicks goes and pees nearby real quick before going to bed. Okay. <laughs> it's important. What an animal. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's you know it it's it's the it's the little things it's, about D. Yeah, it's that you know? detail. That's you can do anything in the game. You you can do anything in this game. The showbiz and... term is world building. Right there it is. Gron swats a fly with his tail. Amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Let's um, do actual gameplay. <laughs> Andromedy, do you do anything before going to bed? Andromedy, you know, probably has disgusting human biology that happens, but I don't feel the need to uh, <laughs> elaborate on it. Amazing. So, Grant, go ahead and roll your perception check. Nat 20, plus four. Holy shit. Amazing. Gron, you survey the landscape around you, and you begin to recognize this region of Phoberus. I've been here before. You, more or less, are about a half day kind of north of a region known as Death Bellow Canyon, a very dangerous region, and you know you should probably avoid it, lest you want to risk kind of similar encounters as the one you just escaped. And so you kind of think about it in your mind, and you look at Nyx overhead and pick out a few guiding stars and you think you're probably about if you really push it maybe two two and a half days away from Akros. in other words in hindsight the cave passage that you just went through took you much farther in the direction that you're headed than maybe it seemed while underground on a nat 20 you kind of think about it for a moment there's kind of this odd displacement of location where it seems like you've gone much farther than what you feel like you've actually traveled that's weird. Other than that, your watch is clear. You have no other signs of the fell hide behind you, and 
open landscape in front of you. Do I see any images of the gods in the sky? Uh, you look up on a nat 20, I'd say you certainly do. In the far distance to the east, you can still vaguely make out Perforos and the distant mountains. And far to the south, indeed, you still see Mogus and Aroas in battle. How's Aroas looking? On a nat 20, it's still pretty hard to say. You know, the the Nixian depictions are, are pretty vague. Go ahead and follow that up with... I know you always say they're bad, but I'm going to give you advantage. Religion check with advantage. I add nothing to religion. Let's see how hot these dice are. That is an 18. Okay. On the die. Awesome. You, you're not trained in this stuff at all, and so you can only kind of base your insight on your kind of gut feelings and, and the things that you've learned, you know, over your lifetime. And that would be that as you look at this scene these stars and the stardust and these forms slowly moving about in their epic grand gestures. Something does not look right. Something seems off about the visage of Mogus as you watch this fight. He is so overwhelming in his attack against his immortal rival that it almost seems disfigured in some way. There's some strange shadow about his form that seems kind of off-putting and wrong. More wrong than usual. He's pretty disturbing on a typical night. Sure. Right. I noticed this. And I think it doesn't really bode well for what's going on down there in Akros. Is there anything else I can do to interpret this? You can. For a moment, you feel a familiar sensation kind of on your shoulder. Something you felt when you had spared the bandit's life when you left Akros, and fleeting in other times. But this sort of tempered yet right at the cusp of that reservation, incredibly powerful and savage feeling. Our people are turned against themselves. I am not your enemy. And then this voice fades. Our people... Gran says into the night. Gran stares up at the sky and the still dead of night, pondering these thoughts, this omen, these words, and your rest comes to an end. I'll take next. Great. How do you wake me up? Um, are you are you sleeping in a ball under your cloak? Damn right I am. Uh, Hell yeah. It takes me a frustrating amount of time to find you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an investigation check. <laughs> yeah, go for it. I actually it. will. Yeah, that's a two. Man, Clix is just so good at like hiding in his clothes. How does he do it? It's kitty stuff. Um, but hearing hearing Gron rummage around trying to find right, Clix, you wake up to the rummaging, not to him yeah, exactly. actually finding you. Where the hell is Clix? <laughs> um. I'm right here. I'm right here. All right. Okay. All right. Awesome. Clicks you awaken. Go ahead and roll perception. Uh, I rolled a nine. Okay. Every once in a while, you'll hear like a distant the cry of some desert animal, a wolf howl, or coyotes fighting. Other than that, your watch is clear. Clicks, you're a bit distracted, perhaps, on a nine by the small but very valuable collection of various artifacts that are beginning to come under your possession. Go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. 16. You can feel this nagging in your mind. You can do so much more. Not a voice, but just that general feeling. But you kind of shake it off as you kind of stare out into the night. Just given that kind of overcoming this nagging feeling, do you think that there's anything clicks would feel or say or, or, or do in reaction to that. Clix turns back and looks at his two companions sleeping and just kind of lets out a sigh of like disappointment, I think, might be the, like in himself, and then, uh, and then just continues his watch. Mm. Okay. Your watch comes to an end without seemingly any interruption, leaving Andromedy. Clix goes up and wakes up Andromedy. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Good morning. Mm. Clix, may I ask you a question before you return to sleep? We're doing this, huh, Scala? <laughs> uh, yeah, what is it? Why do you want to kill your father? <sighs> I suppose the same reason you follow Clothis. It's about purpose. I haven't had much of that in my life. And I guess it just kind of feels good 
to have it. Can you relate? I mean, why do you follow your God? I was chosen to do so. Isn't that your purpose? I do not know my purpose. That is for Clothis to know and for me to enact. Doesn't that make you feel lost? No. I always have her guidance. I trust her. I believe that her plan is what is best for me and for everyone on Theros. But it is so unnatural to want to kill one's parent. Children should be obligated to their parents as parents are, are obligated to care for their children. Just like everything else, it's a deal, a trade. And when the parents don't hold up their end of the bargain, why should the children? I thought as much. What did he do to you? Nothing. That's exactly the point. He never did anything. I see. When someone neglects what they are meant to do, then suffering and punishment follow. I suppose you have been made... You have been made by time and fate into a weapon fit to punish your father. And again, it's about purpose. And in its absence, nothing but pain follows. And that's why I need purpose. Yours has been handed to you. It's a gift. Treasure it. Now go do your watch. I am exhausted. And this has only made me more tired. Clix does ball mode into his robe, as Clix do. Wow. Um, Andromeda Clix returns to his rest. Go ahead and roll perception. Sure. Uh, I'm still exhausted, right? Technically, yes. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. That's only going to be a nine, then. Okay. Is there anything Andromedy does during their rest? I don't know, actually. I'm feeling kind of tired. Maybe I won't, like... Sure. I won't this, really this get as much would, out of reading would as... Would all be with this advantage. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. You just, you take your watch simply, and you really don't see too much at all out in the in the darkness of the wastelands. You do see Nyx overhead and the various figures. Nothing that you can really get a solid read on, though, just by the perception check. All right, cool. And your watch passes. You recover your exhaustion. Everybody finishes a long rest. And the next day is yours to travel as you like. I'll say as we transition into this Phoboros travel, because Gron rolled so well on his previous perception check to kind of know a bit better of where you all are, and Gron can convey that as he feels fit, we'll kind of do do this a little bit more piecemeal, where basically I'm just going to have Gron roll survival with advantage, and that'll count for an entire day. Okay. So... You set out in the morning light, crossed Phoboros to make as quickly as you can to Akros. Gron, go ahead and roll that survival. You can take a d4 on this. Thank you. Yes. 23. Awesome. Great roll. Uh, your first day's travel is quite easy. Gron, you are extremely familiar with this terrain. Gron, you know crossing basically more than half of the entire wasteland. On foot, it'll take some time, but if you keep up like this, then you should be able to avoid anything terribly hostile unless you're really caught off guard. After all, you and Califex have managed to stay alive out here for years by simply avoiding danger. And so, as a group, you think you can, if you keep this pace, you won't have too much of a problem. By the end of this first day, though, you're heading southwest to the southeast and beginning to appear due east. You see this very dark cloud in the distance, and it's kind of heavily obscuring the landscape beneath it. Gron, go ahead and roll either nature or insight for me. It's a 12 nature. You can't, you can't be terribly sure, because it's been a long time since you looked at that region, whether up close or at a distance but you kind of vaguely recognize that to be kind of the boundary of Death Bellow Canyon in the distance. These sort of sinking bogs that are riddled with spires and canyons and large swaths of caves that cut deep into the surrounding wasteland. You don't remember such a terrible cloud over the region, but you certainly know well enough that you want to steer the party well clear of it. Indeed. And I do. Gron has probably heard stories about Death Bellow Canyon from, just like legends, from being out there in the wasteland. So what does Gron know about Death Bellow Canyon? You would know that the Rage Gore Minotaurs are from Death Bellow Canyon. That's kind of the third of the big three tribes. Um, 
And even as bad as the Felhide are, the Ragegar are by far the worst. These kind of, like, incredibly brutal warring bands. They even, like, war against each other. They are just, like, considered to be the most savage. And they are frenzied barbarian fighters and will easily rage simply at the sight of blood. They seem to feel no pain, regardless of how incredibly wounded they are in combat. And I think, like, the biggest kind of fairy tale, like, boogeyman fairy tale Gron might know is that, like, some of the strongest ones have been known to take, like, decapitations and things and keep fighting simply because of their rage. And then as soon as they have won, they drop dead. I relay all this as we walk past the canyons at a distance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys steer like miles clear of this, but you can still see it in the distance. They say that the entire canyon wall is painted red, the blood of everyone who's ever been there. No one's ever emerged. Hell yeah. We're not going there, right? No, no, we never go to Death Bellow Canyon. Repeat after me. We never go to Death Bellow Canyon. Hell yeah. If no one has ever emerged, where do the stories come from? Uh, I, I uh, huh, never thought about that. <laughs> A valid conundrum. <laughs> Is there anything you guys do uh, as far as any sort of downtime or, or anything like that? Nope. Mm. I'll do some reading. Great. Um, I'll take another crack at the Tome of Understanding. You got it. Go ahead and give me, I forget what it was. I think it was Arcana. Arcana? Yeah. And I'll, I'll give myself a bit of guidance here. Okay. Oof. Oh, no. Oh, actually, I didn't roll my portents you for today. You didn't roll your portents for today. That's true. So maybe I can replace that three with something. Hmm. Oh boy. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah. How's this divination wizard gonna fuck me today? Let's replace that uh, three with a 16, giving me a 27 total. Jesus Christ. Okay. Your allies watch as you enter a very similar state to the first time you read this tome. You cast about the pages for several minutes, seemingly in a trance, unable to comprehend anything at all. But slowly, as you read it, hear these words and understand. The Epic of the Theriad describes the exploits of various champions of Heliod, all of whom are simply called the Champion, as if they were a single individual, because the identities of the heroes aren't mentioned. The tales become more to say about the character of their god than any champion's mortal deeds. The Caliphaea, by contrast, is about the exploits of a single mortal hero, Caliphae the Mariner, who snuck into Mount Velus and stole Perforos's tears hid behind Phoenix himself, and wrote down his darkest secrets, and raced Thassa to the edge of the world before sailing off the edge and into Nyx. Tales of this sort highlights the gods' pettiness and vanity, and promote the somewhat blasphemous notion that a mere mortal can outwit the divine. Andromeda, you gain this glimmer of understanding, and you gain one more success. I guess if I have some more time, I might also try and read a bit of uh, the elements, principles of fire, water, earth, and their gods. Great. You read through this very long, tightly bound, large scroll. Its calligraphy is beautiful, and it appears to be a collection more so than a single book uh, of different musings and short stories describing the rather complicated relationship between Perforos, Nylea, and Thassa, and the stark contrast between their, quote, brother gods, Heliod and Erebos. And so as you read this, go ahead and give me a religion check. Sure. Oh, come on. That's only going to be a 10. Okay. It seems to kind of be getting at this almost human-like family relationship between these five gods— almost as if they were kind of set into the pantheon and described and kind of rationalized before a lot of the other gods like came into being almost or were kind of given 
specific form or dominion. But kind of as you're reading this, you're a bit distracted because in like the margins of some of these large blocks of text on this scroll, it's almost like whoever was copying this made little annotations and cliff notes talking about some weird like love triangle between Perforos and Mylea and Thassa. And it just completely distracts you from really trying to get any actual valuable information out of this scroll. You found somebody's fanfic and you couldn't help reading it. <laughs> Beautiful. Anything good in there? Goddamn teenagers. They'll let anyone be a scribe these days. Great. So unless there's anything else, that's basically the first day of travel. A great success. And so for camp, I'll just say we'll make like a group perception check. 17. 12. 7. Okay. Not a bad average. As the three of you take your individual watches, maybe Gron more than the rest of you, but you kind of sort of get the sense that a lot of the wandering warbands are a bit occupied by the fact that Akros is under siege, and that's probably where they all are, right? So, so far, you really find nothing to get in the way of your travel, and any kind of beasts or or smaller monsters of the like would be easily enough handled by the three of you now at level six. And so as such on those watches, you're not surprised by much of anything out here uh, as you continue to keep pace. Gron on your seven, very far to the north, due north, so not the way you came, but kind of off in a slightly different direction. During your watch, you can see a large lumbering figure moving about the far distance in the middle of the night. Mm. lumbering like uh cyclops go ahead and give me a nature check 13 okay more than likely it's something either a cyclops or another giant of some kind who's wandered out into the wastes out, off of the mountains can i estimate how far away it is on that roll you think probably like more than 200 feet it's it's a ways away but it's so big you can you can just kind of make it out in the distance goes on and eventually fades into view over the horizon, and we move on to day two. Go ahead and roll on another roll another survival check for me, Gron. Still with advantage? Uh, yeah. And take a d4 as well. 13. Say that again. Okay. 13. Say that again, but in normal. <laughs> God damn it. 13. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that's the attitude. Of the th I rolled two fives. Oh, uh, that's a bummer. So your pace is a little bit slower. You find more obstacles that you're kind of dodging around, but all it's doing is, you know, slowing you down. You're, you're doing a, a well enough job still of avoiding the danger. And so, you know, there's occasionally a kind of large gorge or errant rock formation that you think some sort of creatures could be using as a nest. And you keep steering the party around all these various landmarks and keep heading south. The key to navigating the wasteland is to avoid as much as you possibly can. <laughs> Go around all the shit. It gets to be mid-afternoon, and you can he hear something ahead of you. In the direction you're headed, you can hear shouting of voices and the clanging of metal. Everybody go ahead and give me a perception check. 21. Six. Six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two of you have no idea what's going on. Andromedy, you hear shouts in the distance, kind of over a ridge ahead of you, where people are crying out, and you hear these minotaurs. That's three down. There's only four left. Let's kill them all and be done with them. Kind of crowded over the shouts of, Stand your ground! Don't let them surround us! As well as a familiar voice. No! We can't get backed into this corner. It'll be the end of us. Andromedy, you immediately recognize that voice to be Califex's. Okay, yeah. Kron, Clothis has led us to your companion, but he is in danger, and we must help him. I enter a rage and run directly over the ridge. Awesome. Gron, you book it for this ridge where you hear these voices and the screaming of combat, and you leap and find yourself over the top of a hoplite troop pinned down against a rock wall by five minotaurs. Califex is indeed among them, as you are now 20 feet over them 
in midair, having jumped off this small cliff. Everybody, let's go ahead and roll some initiative. 21. That feels right. Uh, 13. <laughs> uh, 8. I'm very startled by Gron's... Heroic. Heroic charge there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Also, do we all take fire damage, or...? Probably. No, because... Well... You do it as you run? I, I sh- could do it while I run, but that's not what I said, because that's not what I felt that's in the not. moment. No. So, yes, the, both of you take three fire damage. Gron, you're up first. You're falling in midair into the middle of this scene. First of all, I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. 19. Okay. You land on the ground like Iron Man style in the middle of this scene. Talifex directly behind you up against this wall where these very injured Akroan hoplites, some of them appear dead. He cries out, By the gods! Gron! And you are now face-to-face with five minotaurs. You take half of 2d6 because you fell, but you did land not prone. So you take uh, four, you're raging, so two bludgeoning damage. And it's your turn. What are you doing? I don't feel it. So I see five minotaurs right in front of me? Yes. Um, go ahead and give me a quick perception check. 13. Okay. Some of them look already hurt. You can't tell how much. They appear to be raging. You've kind of literally just jumped into the middle of this brawl. All right. Uh, And these are... These are monster manual minotaurs. These are 10 feet tall. These are big-ass minotaurs. Shit. (laughs) All right. There's five in a line. I'm going to run directly at the one in the middle. Go for it. All right. Maul swinging. The 26 to hit. Okay. Nice. 11 bludgeoning damage. Cool. And, uh... I'm going to try to push him prone. Oh, okay. So that's a strength saving throw. That's a natty 19. Sorry, bud. You slash and charge at this, the one in the center, having picked out who seems to be the beefiest among this band, their leader. He kind of stands his ground and says, What sort of traitor? And looks really mad. And... I have another attack. You have another attack. Yeah. Go for it. That's a 24 to hit. Double ones, which become double twos. Yeah. Which is the same as last time. 11 bludgeoning damage. You can't tell about the other ones, but this, the seeming leader, uh, just by size and stature and and rage, is resistant to these physical attacks. So am I. That's true. Not that special. (laughs) Oh, Gron, I, I can't believe it. Halifax up next on a 20 turns to his his seeming allies, these Eroan hoplites. This one is a friend and a great ally. If your lives mean anything to you at all, you will not harm him. As he turns back towards you, Gron leaps over your shoulders in a move that the two of you have done many times and strikes out at the same minotaur that you attacked with his spear with advantage. Cuz sneak attack. He crit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got yourself a good one there, Gron. That's my friend. <laughs> so all this sneak attack, all this sneak attack damage is doubled. Wow. Uh, I'll just tell you because it's badass. He did 26 damage. Wow. Damn. Nice. Rogue's gonna rogue, and then he leaps off, and he doesn't provoke an opportunity attack because of skirmisher, because he's a scout rogue. And now he is behind this minotaur, flanking with Gron. Spear out at the ready. The rest of the hoplites go next. They're also on initiative 20. Seeing this display... The Crowans, Stand your ground! You hear one of them shout out as they also begin attacking, all with advantage. None of them are able to kind of get around Gron to attack the uh, center one. But Gron, you do see some spears pierce into the side of two of the other minotaurs and they look hurt that is down to clicks you saw gron jump over this ridge and you hear the fray of battle somewhere clicks is gonna run and leap in awesome uh go ahead and give me an acrobatics check 16 Okay. Where are you going to try and land? You leap over, and on a 16, you can kind of aim yourself a little bit where you want to fall. So I want to try and just 
fall and surprise attack the middle one. The same one that Gron is attacking. Okay. Um, you will take five points of bludgeoning damage. I rolled pretty high on that 2d6, but you're not prone. You pass the check. Go ahead. Nice. Okay. Uh, it's a dirty 20 to hit. Hell yeah. 15 piercing damage. Cool. Now I will make my offhand attack. Yeah, go ahead. A 21. Okay, yeah. And an additional two piercing damage. Cool. Clicks, this Minotaur looks huge. He's maybe two whole feet taller than Gron. And that is their turn. Any idea as to how hurt the Minotaur looks? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and give me uh, a perception check as well. Nope, I can't tell. I just stabbed it and fell down and finished my fall because I was at two. Great. Um, some of them go to attack the hoplites, and the leader is going to attack Gron recklessly. Lands an 18 on the dice for a total of... It hits. 24, yeah, that's going to hit. Um, <laughs> it is. Trying to see this enormous great axe plunge down towards you for 13 slashing, which is halved, but then an additional... 11 necrotic, which is not, as this sort of zealotous, twisted, barbarian rage smites down with his swing. (sighs) Traitor or not, I'm going to end you first. And that was his turn. One of the other ones is going to turn around and attack Califax. They're all attacking recklessly. You see Gron on the other side of this Minotaur band. Califex takes a battle axe to the side, taking a bit of damage there. I'm going to use my reaction to attack the one that just attacked Califex. Hell yeah. I'm really angry about that. And this is with uh, advantage because he's reckless. Because, yeah. And you're also flanking. So uh, that's true. Couldn't get any better. That's a 26 to hit. <laughs> Absolutely. 15 bludgeoning damage. What do you say? What does this look like, this maneuver? I see this other Minotaur swing out at Califex, and I glimpse a moment of opportunity and get right in there with my maul. Hit him. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Uh, That one is actually already looking kind of hurt, so there is that to notice. The other Minotaurs among this warband, some of them look injured as if you've just simply because you've arrived at this fight in the middle of the fight. And so there is that to note. That was them. This is Andromedy's turn now. Bottom of initiative. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move up to the ledge and not jump off. Roll perception for me. Sure. Uh, 18. Okay. So if you you were to go maybe 30 feet around and then 30 feet back, you wouldn't have to jump down, but it would cost you a lot of movement. So that's what you're looking at. Uh, then I'm gonna stay just up here and and be artillery. Hell yeah! I think I'm gonna do this. Cast wish. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Somewhere in the underworld, a demon has your fucking number. <laughs> I need the Minotaur leader to make me a Constitution saving throw. Ooh, okay. It's gonna be an eight plus three. Uh, that will not beat the DC. As I levitate him off the ground 20 Uh-oh. feet. Oh, okay. I just, I just what? fucking lift him into the air. What? What's so what triggery? Califex is going to take a attack of opportunity there. With advantage. Gets a 16. It's going to hit. Clicks can as well. Gron can't because he already spent his reaction this round. 16. That hits. Uh, six damage. So cutthroat. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else from Andromeda? Uh, no, I just I just wave at the Minotaur, who's now on my eye level. <laughs> You're seething, just mad as hell. Wow. Wizards. Great, that's Andromeda's turn. We're back up to the top. That's Gron. All right. One's 20 feet off the ground directly above you, and the other four in various states of battle weariness, but also rage. All right, and Clix is fairly close to me. Clix is right next to you. And Califex is five feet away facing you. Yeah, all right. Uh, I am going to hit with Maul. Just uh, one of the, the one that looks the most hurt to me that's still on the ground. I'm going to say, don't hurt my friend. 
And I'm also going to use Wrathful Smite on this. Ooh, hell yeah. You now are face-to-face with your your companion, and you both just give each other this nod, like you are reading each other's thoughts, and you look to the most hurt one, both of you ready to bear down. Go for it. That's a 22 to hit. Double ones again. Oh, man. Which is uh, 11 bludgeoning damage, and then four psychic damage, and it needs to make a wisdom saving throw against 15. Okay, that's a two on the dice, plus nothing. Yeah, it's uh, frightened of me for the next minute. Concentration. Ooh, okay. This minotaur is frankly bloodied, looks at you in fear, (sighs) and begins backing away as it snarls, battle axes in hand. That one doesn't seem to be a threat. With my second attack, I'm going to attack a different one. Cool. The one that you just attacked looks the most hurt of the remaining four. The rest of them don't look as as hurt yet. All right, I'm just going to hit the next closest one then. Great. Probably not going to hit it, though. The 14? 14 just hits. Oh, that's nice. Nice. And that is 15 bludgeoning damage. Awesome. Yeah, that's the thing about, you know, barbarians and big monsters. It's like generally they're easy to hit. They just have a lot of health. So awesome. Now that one's looking pretty hurt, too. As we go to Califex and the boys, here we go. Um... Califex attacking the same one as you with advantage. Gets a nat 19. There we go. Sneak attack. A lot of dice. That's another 17 from him. Gron, you watch as this injured Minotaur is cut down by the teamwork of you and your companion. Now united. As he stabs and slashes into him with his spear, the Minotaur falls to the ground, dead. Yeah. <sighs> That's the way, brother. Yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's one down. Um, the other hoplites are going to attack. Okay. All of them landing blows now, seeming to have turned the tide with your party's arrival. There's still one that's pretty hurt, and then other two that don't look as hurt. That is Clix's turn. Uh, the one that's pretty hurt is the one Gron is engaged with, right? Going for that one. Yeah, 15 hits, right? Yes, it does. Sweet. Uh, 13 piercing damage. Uh, yeah, that brings it to death's door. Go ahead. And I'll go in for the offhand. Um, and then I'm assuming a, an 18 will hit as well. So, And then 5 piercing damage with my offhand. Clicks, go ahead and paint a picture as you kill steal from Gron. Yeah, so I come up behind Gron. I quickly do a torso slash with my short sword and as the foe hunches over you know uh to to clutch at their clutch at their (sighs) stomach i just take my dagger and directly up through the bottom of the neck and into their into (laughs) their jaw oh Oh, savage savage. just brutal absolutely califex looks at you and then back to gron your new friend can fight and that is the remaining minotaurs the one in the air it's in the air. Um, there's no, like, save against Levitate, right? No. It just happens. Um, no additional saves or so anything. That's so brutal. That's so brutal. Um, he's going to try and chuck his great axe at you. I welcome you to try. So this is Reckless. Yep. That's a 12 plus 6, 18. Um, what would it be if it were a 7? Uh, 7 plus 6 is only a 13. With. Oh, my God. This raging war leader captain whips his giant great axe at you Andromedy is sure he is gonna he is gonna land his mark and it soars past you with a twinge of bent fate <sighs> no! <sighs> he roars out in rage unable to do shit because he's just floating, floating. in the air <laughs> amazing um, the other two are gonna attack um, they're gonna start attacking Gron who now looks like the biggest threat. This is Reckless. This is a 19 plus mod from 1. And a 12 plus 6, 18, I think, still hits. They don't have this same sort of zealotous fury as the captain, so this is all just going to be physical damage. This is uh, 16 halved to 8. And then 20 halved to 10. It rolled really high on that. Exactly half. That's their turn. 
we are back to Andromedy. I will imbue Scully with a bit of magic. Uh, she will fly over to this Minotaur leader and attempt to touch. Get away! Get away! I'm going to change that to a 15. <laughs> okay. I'm going to change that 4 to a 15 because I want this sure. third level Inflict Wounds to hit. Oh my fucking god. Okay. That's all my, my tricks for today. But Tries to swat out with his massive claws and horns. She will land on him, and then from her, a thousand green glowing needles will rip into his flesh. <laughs> Dealing 10, 20, 25 necrotic damage. Takes this brutal necrotic damage. Weirdly, Andromeda, you see this raging, zealotous minotaur take this, and it kind of envelops his form and then forms almost this dark aura around him. <sighs> As he seethes in rage, bloodied, go ahead and give me an insight or religion check. Sure. Um, it's only going to be a 13. Okay. You have seemingly scratched the surface of some darker presence, darker power that is within this minotaur. Mm. Uh, you're not sure what it is, but it, it's it's not the same sort of Mogus Fury that you've seen Gron channel. It is something different. Be cautious. There is some foul darkness in that one. It is not of the gods. We go back to Gron. There are two remaining uh, in various states of injury, as well as this one floating above. I'm going to activate another smite. Wrathful smite. Awesome. And I'm going to attack one that's closer to me. That's a 25 to hit. That hits. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Is that more With the double, double ones, ones again? Well, it's a one and a two, but... Oh yeah. my god, these are so bad. It, yeah, that's uh, 11 bludgeoning Another 11? damage. Yep. Four psychic damage, and he needs to make a wisdom save against 15. That's another two on the dice again. This one's scared of you too. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> yeah, just beginning to... to it rage bending to the strength of fear in this moment. Yeah, I'm gonna attack the other one. Awesome. That's a 24 to hit. Yep. 15 bludgeoning death. Sick. Now both of them look pretty hurt. <sighs> That's the way. I knew you would come. I did not lose hope. And uh, Califex is gonna make his attack. That's another crit from Califex. Jeez. From the advantage. <laughs> I don't know why I'm rolling so hot for him and not these Minotaurs, but fuck knows. That's the power of friendship at work right there. This is the power of friendship. This is going to be an ass load of sneak attack damage. Um, and I'll tell you something else spicy, just because it's cinematic. Gron, you see Califex, someone who, when they left you those weeks or months or however long ago it was, was definitely the scout between the two of you takes his spear as it glows with radiant energy he smites this minotaur having dipped paladin in the time you two spent apart and fucking smites him for an additional 15 damage you see this spear rammed through the back of this minotaur piercing out the front through the face as it burns with radiant fire he pulls it out, and the corpse of this minotaur falls to the ground dead. Where's he learn to do that? <sighs> By holding on to hope, brother. And that is his turn. Hoplite's next. Hoplites finish off the remaining of the ones still on the ground. All that is left is the one floating in the air, now shrouded in this mysterious, hateful aura. As we go to Clix. Shoot him with my bow. I will kill you all. Go ahead. Uh, an 18. That'll hit. Eight piercing damage. Great. We go to the remaining Minotaur Zealot. He's still fucking stuck in the air. <laughs> he threw his great axe. <laughs> he can't He can't gore. Let's see what I can do here. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'll do. You see this aura coalesce around his hand as he conjures this shadow into an eldritch blast. Counterspell. 
Okay. I just want to ruin this guy's day. Oh my god. Oh my god. This as, is, he does, as he does this, as he gathers the energy to his yeah, hand. Yeah, this necrotic, foul energy. Andromeda sees it and just using their command of mana, plucks at one strand of it and watches the whole thing just unravel. And it does right in front of this raging Minotaur's face. It's a cantrip. It just works. You just do that. Um, you can counterspell a cantrip for free, and that's his turn. All right, cool. That's your turn. <laughs> I'm going to stop concentrating on levitate, and okay. he's going to float down to the ground. Okay. And then I will cast heroism on Gron and use my voice of authority. You know what you must do. Destroy him. I can do that. So now, standing here on the ground, this minotaur has just floated gently down in front of me. I'm surrounded by my friends, and I'm going to do what I do best. I'm going to hit this thing with them all. <laughs> awesome. That's our boy. Oh, Gron, I really like your new maul. Thank you. A god's... Uh, create a t- twin brother David but uh never mind thank you that's some wild shit you just said <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear more about it um it's 24 to hit yep 13 bludgeoning damage he's still on death's door as he you swing into this raging monster that is Andromeda's turn as we now go back to Gron how convenient oh the actual Gron you gain you gain four temporary hit points alright probably won't be needed. Probably not, but, you know. (laughs) Alright, that one didn't quite do the trick. I'm gonna do it again. Uh, I'm going to use my Wrathful Smite and hit this thing. Go for it. Double ones! On the attack roll? On the attack roll with advantage. Oh no! Gron, you're just trying to do your job! So I raise up my maul to uh, crush this guy, and I look into his face, and I remember what Mogus said. This is our people, and I'm wondering if I'm doing the right thing here. Give me insight with advantage. Alright, that's a 10. You don't know whether or not this is the right thing to do, but in his eyes you don't see red, you see black. I snap out of it and realize that this is, this Minotaur is far beyond anything that I can help him with, and I'm gonna try again to Hell steal yeah. my resolve and hit him, and I miss. I rolled what? a 1 and a 4. Oh my god, Kron, No! <laughs> Oh, wow, I ruined a really good moment there. Cool. Yeah, you fucking did. Total of? 12. Okay, yeah, that does miss. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, all right. What's wrong with you? Get well, it together. Uh. <laughs> that cannot be wrong voice ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all right, friend. Califex kind of shows a staying hand towards clicks and like, it's okay, he gets nervous sometimes. Then Califex is going to kill Steel right here. It's fine. Gron's a team player. Gron leads the league in assists. It's fine. Yeah. This is uh, this is Califax's turn. A four and a two. Neither total making the... Oh, I know who's going to kill... Oh, wow. And in fact, you see this Minotaur now that he's on the ground. He reaches around and blocks Gron's two attacks with his forearms. Turns around and blocks Califex's with his horns. The hoplites kind of really unable to get into melee as as you and clicks and and califex have this guy kind of surrounded and the rest of the body is taking up the rest of the fray they're going to try and attack with disadvantage unable to get any of the three of their spears through this crowded scene we go to clicks well i'm gonna do what i do uh 16 hits let's fucking end this prick Stop, he's already dead. 18 piercing damage. Clix, you are sure that this strike would slay this minotaur. In fact, you pierce his heart through his massive hide, but he remains standing as black overtakes his eyes. A raging monster propelled only by zealotous fury, raging beyond death. Shit. <laughs> it's now right, his turn. <laughs> right, that barbarian ability. A zealot barbarian through and through. He's attacking recklessly. I told you guys. They do this. And gets a 17 plus mod on Gron. Yeah. 
a fucking one on the D12. I know how you feel. <laughs> I know how you feel right now. That's uh, six half to three physical, but an additional 11 necrotic. Holy shit. How did you do that? Following that one up with an 11 on the D12. All right. As he slams down, you do not see any sort of consciousness within this raging beast anymore. It is now Andromeda's turn. You see all of this as well. All right, I'm going to kill him then. Fine. Please. I encant from my book. Three silken arrows rise up, uh, a string drawing each one to the Minotaur. They pierce through his black eyes, and one goes into his throat for eight force damage. (laughs) He immediately fails three death saves and is dead. Okay. You see this happen, Andromedy, and he stands and wavers. He's speaking not in Minotaur, but in a language none of you understand. He screams out this horrid phrase. We go back to the top. That's Gron. This figure is still standing in front of you. Go ahead and give me an insight check. Uh, no. Um, man, Gron is good at none of this kind of stuff. Andromedy. Yeah? Go ahead and give me a Arcana or Religion check. Uh, that's gonna be a 18 Arcana. Okay. The body of this Minotaur is dead, and whatever is propelling it is whatever this malicious rage is. And so you think, like, decapitate him something, but as long as he is still standing, he will still attack and rage. Um, the body is dead, but its rage lives on. You must crush it utterly. Well, Gron knows how to end rage. He's familiar with how Uh that would work. Sure. All right. So Gron's gonna say, stop attacking it and don't let it hit you. Gron is gonna disengage and back up. Oh, shit. Okay. You say that. Califex hears you say it. You heard what he said. Do not engage. Rope. Throw me a rope. Pointing to one of the other hoplite soldiers. They throw him his rope. Califex uses his turn to try and grapple this raging beast. You see Califex trying to tie this minotaur down as the hoplites help him. Giving advantage. They are trying to restrain this raging beyond death force down and struggling to do so. They're trying to, and that's basically what they spend their turn doing. They don't attack him. As we go to clicks, I will also disengage, and then I will use my rope to try and double down on the restraints. Awesome. So that's going to be a contested grapple check. I think that's opposed athletics. It's a flat roll for them, but it is a advantage roll for you. Okay, cool. 17. He got a 14 total. Okay. You have him restrained. He drops to his knees. <sighs> you see this aura bursting from his form as his expression is complete darkness. Clicks, that's your turn, you disengage. That's the Minotaur's turn, but he can't really attack at anybody because everybody's backed away. He can attack at the Hoplites because they can't disengage to grapple in the same round. With disadvantage, that's nat 20 Uh. and a (laughs) 2. Can't attack, doesn't deal damage, and his rage ends. You see this shadowy aura leave this body and it immediately collapses to the ground dead. Oh, Gron. Gron. Califex immediately runs to you and gives you a hug. And then a big handshake. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. I knew it. Knew what? I knew you would come to our aid. How, how did you know? I heard a voice. Not three days prior. Gron's eyes go wide. He looks to Andromedy. Andromedy is walking down to join the rest of the band while this is happening, and I just give a a respectful nod to Gron and smile. Gron kind of snaps out of it and says, But what about Akros? The hoplites kind of muster themselves and come into this conversation, one of them stepping forward. We were, we were taken off guard. We were trying to find out where the Endless Horde appears to be coming from. We tracked their movements towards Deathbellow Canyon when we were attacked by these rage gores. He looks to you, Gron, and to the rest of the party. We are indebted to the three of you. All three of them kind of salute and bow. Then you'll help us get back into Akros? 
What purpose? What is it you seek? Clix turns to Andromedy, raises his eyebrows, and nods towards the soldiers, signaling to Andromedy, you better do the talking. Mm. Akros is in ruin, travelers. I do not know. There is an object, an artifact of great power, one that can perhaps mend this this foul perversion of fate. We have secured one piece from the wasteland, and I sort of gesture to the covered Pyxis. Mm. But the other two pieces, as my visions have told me, are in Akros. One in the hands of a warrior, the other held by a leader among the enemy. And we must secure them. He looks to the rest of the hoplites and then to Califex. You've heard the oracle? By Eroes' grace, a victory may be yet ahead. He turns back to you. I am Bratos, and these are my men. This one here, this one who knows you, Califex. He has been in my service only a few weeks, but he has proven himself a good fighter. And if he says that you are to be trusted, then we trust you, and we will aid you in this task. Bratos, are there other patrols like yourselves? Out here, do you have a a command somewhere where we might regroup? All of the Legion outposts in the wastes have been destroyed that we have been able to find. All of the other scouting parties have either gone missing or been found dead. If it weren't for, well, it seems fate that you came to our aid, we may have met the same end. Getting back into Akros will not be easy, but there is a way. Come, we will not have the light for long, but if we stay on guard and move fast... We should arrive at the outer gates by nightfall. As you say. You can see that these hoplites spend a few moments burying the deceased among their company. Well, you can see that there are four total, Bratos and Califex included. There are also two more who have died in this battle before you arrived. They bury them near this cliffside and leave small coins beside them. Probably would be pretty hard to pilfer from those bodies before they bury him, right? <laughs> you <laughs> fucking bitch. <laughs> you absolute goon. Go ahead and give me an insight check. Uh, just an 11. Yeah. Coin is coin. <laughs> Does this burial take uh, 10 minutes? Sure. While while Clix is deciding whether he wants to pilfer coins from the eyes of the dead, um, I'd like to use that time to cast my new piety spell. I'd like to cast divination, and I'd like to ask Clothis, what power was that that gave such ungodly strength to that Minotaur? You call out to Clothis with your divination, and you get a booming and furious presence in your mind. The entire landscape around you fades into nothing but the threads that tie the world together. And you hear her voice. Thine eye is still closed, but this force is unmistakable. The fear that you were shown is now given a face. Death's hunger comes for this land. And you see all of the threads turn black and are swallowed by shadow as you are snapped from this omen. Uh, religion or history to know what that's in reference to? With advantage. Sure. I gotta pick these up. Is that two 20s? That's two 20s. Double 20s. This game has been absolutely Erratic. fucking wild. Erratic what with these the dice. goddamn fuck? <laughs> You know exactly what she is referencing, Andromedy. It is the stuff of nightmares and the darkest myths of old. She speaks of the power of a titan itself. Andromedy comes out of this trance, knowing what we're up against. Sort of looks at these, at all these ragtag people. But then also at the corpses of the dead minotaurs around and how, sort of despite the odds, and all of the odds that we've had along this journey, we have still managed to persevere and prevail. Would you like to know what that dark force writhing in the corners of our dreams has been? I say this to the group. Califex turns to you and says, Oracle, what do you know? In the time before there was time, great beings of primordial fear terrorized Theros. My lady bound them and has kept them as her eternal charge below. 
but she has risen, for they have also found a way to slip their bonds. And this foul presence is that of the titan of death's hunger. You see Bratos look to you in shock. All of the men who remain around this scene. Kroxa, how can it be? You see him clutching a, a small symbol of Erois as he says this in terror. I know, I know your fear, but Clothis has brought us all together, unlikely as we may be, because we have the skills and the courage to overcome this ancient horror. He looks to his men, to the three of you. Pray the gods deem that future worthy of all of us. Come, we'll be losing the light soon. And he ushers to move the group. In the distraction of that story, Clix did not pilfer the dead. <laughs> Good to know. The three of you now travel with Califex, Bratos, and the remaining hoplites through the wastes that remain between you and Akros. Califex comes up to Gran. What happened? Where did you go? I was looking for you while, while I was out here. It's, you disappeared. I was captured. They brought me to Akros. They only see me as a minotaur. They don't understand who I am. He puts his hand on your arm. We're going to show them who you are, Gran. I know this. You started here and now. Already these men trust you. You saved their lives. You saved my life. More than once. I can't imagine the journey you've been on. Your friends! Your friends, please! He turns to Clix and Andromedy. Oh, these guys? I'm Califex, he bows. If it weren't for this one here, I'd have died out in the desert as a child. And if it weren't for me, you would have died out here in the desert as an adult, too. <laughs> <laughs> Clix extends a hand to Califex. <laughs> my name's Clix. It's nice to meet you. You're pretty quick. Takes a sort of cunning to guide a brutish beef of a minotaur like Gran, wouldn't you say? Clix kind of like throws his dagger in the air and catches it and just says, Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I can see you are skilled as well. He turns then to Andromedy. It is good to meet you in a more corporeal manner. I sort of bow my head. I am Andromedy. I am the voice of Clothis. I'm indebted to your message, Andromedy. Thank you. It was the very least I could do, after all Gron has done for me. I can only imagine. He kind of turns to you and a bit away from the rest of the group and says, I know you can see how special he is, and just keeps walking. The three of you travel with this party into the evening and into the night, and over a rolling ridge and sweeping gorge, you come to a hill. And as you rise this crest, you see from the perhaps very initial perspective of the raging horde that you saw in the very beginning of this journey, the vast polis of Akros across a narrow and now ruined bridge on fire in the night. Pratos turns to you all and says, We rest here. He looks to Andromedy and says, I don't know what your plan is, but you better know it once we get you in. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake and May. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.